Welcome, everybody. I appreciate y'all being here today. Uh, Scott had asked me a few weeks ago to prepare and maybe put together a uh, presentation for some professional development on how to own a room. How to own a room is an interesting topic for a couple of different reasons. One, as you may have met me last week, you know, I've got, you know, I get all worked up and I'm a little excited sometimes and I can go in. I don't mind walking into a room full of people and, and just being me. Um, that comes with a few things that comes with some personal history and some obviously experiences there. However, there are some ways that we can do this and prepare how to own a room. Scott brought us on board, myself and Aaron as new coaches. And one of the first things he taught us in our onboarding was when we go to a presentation, we need to own the room. We need to have an agenda, set it up, ask if they have any inputs. If not, move on, move through, show them what they need them and give them that warm fuzzy. They need to know that we're in control and that we own that room. But how does that look? Who's ever seen a movie? Tim. Hey, Tim. Look at me. No. Tim. Look at me. Everybody knows this character. This character is Chili Palmer. Chili Palmer was a great character from a movie called Get Shorty. I'm not talking about being a Shylock or anything else, but this character, when he said something, he said only what he needed to say and he moved on. Say as little as possible for this role. Now, Chili Palmer was a great movie, cinematic adventure character, um, but that's not what we're talking about here. This is my attention step. I just want to show you guys what we're talking about. So let's really get into this. How do we do this? What's some of the things we can do to own the room? Confidence. Now, confidence is interesting. Confidence can be something that some people have. I don't have confidence. I just don't mind making myself look like a fool. So there's a little difference in what that is. But confidence is going to kind of be the Tarantino of this. I'm going to go on with our presentation. I want to talk about some other steps that we can do to help build confidence if this is not something that you have right out the gate. But let's talk about some what we might consider people with confidence. This is Steve Jobs. Steve came to us and when he walked onto that stage, when he gave us those Apple presentations, he definitely owns a room. There is something about Steve Jobs that he knew what he was wanting to say, knew how to say it, and he knew how to connect to an audience. But as well, let's look at this one. This is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RBG. If you guys are fans of RBG, she came to us at a time in life when we were moving through the women's movements, move, women's rights. Uh, RBG went into uh, politics and went into a huge, huge career uh, to make the world a better place. But if you didn't know anything about RBG, in stature, she's a very small woman. And what she was doing and when she was doing it, it didn't matter. When she walked into a room, it didn't matter who was in that room. She definitely owns a room. Both Steve and RBG definitely have confidence in what they're doing. So to look at some of the things that maybe, and I don't know this, maybe they did to prepare to have that said confidence. So how do we build it? Let's look at it. Right now, we've got a few other members on the screen. On the right, we've got Michael Jr. Michael Jr. is a presenter, a stand-up comedian, uh, and he helps people walk with purpose. That's his words. He definitely is in that realm. Um, but when he talks, when he tells his, his stories, how he does it, what he's delivering, all of those things about Michael Jr., you want to be in that room with him. You want to hear what he's saying. And then in the middle here, we've got Simon Sinek. If anyone knows anything about Simon Sinek as a leadership and as a motivator, he talks a lot about the why. Why is it that we do something? But Simon's got a real smooth voice. I do not, but Simon has a very particular voice when it comes into it. But there's a few things that they're doing to engage and own that room. One of them is the delivery, their timing their purpose, their energy, their pauses, because even the pauses are part of the delivery, eye contact, all of those things and how they're engaging with their audience gives them the tools and things that they need to be successful in owning the room, but also their storytelling. Michael Jr. talks about a story about his daughters outside playing with their hamster and like a, a hawk swoops in and plucks up their hamster and the daughter's crying. He says, no, 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 they're friends. They're just going to go back to the, to the hamster store, the pet store, and we'll go pick them up later. Which, of course, he's lying to his daughter saying that he's going to go basically buy another hamster. But the way he's given these personal real life examples, these real stories, make people connect to what we're doing. So when we're engaged with the mentor, um, tell them those personal stories. Tell them the stories you've had with the apprentice. Tell them the things you've done. Share with them their successes. And that way they know, obviously, 
you are in control and you have that room because of the information you have. So a lot of that does come as energy, eye contact, the personal stories. These are the things that we can do to help prepare ourselves before we go into and owning that room. Now, a couple others. We'll talk about this one here, structure. I prepared for this presentation six or seven times. I've gone over it, I've gone through it, I've tweaked a couple things, but I had a definite thought, a structure that I wanted to present. So I knew where I wanted to go and I had to make sure that it flowed. I knew that, that what was getting there was gonna be the way um, to get there. But at the same time, I have to be able to improvise. I have to go off of some of the information. When I speak to large groups, I ask a lot of questions and I get information and answers. It might be 20, 15, 30 minutes later that I reference back to that. So I'm able to use their information within that to go ahead and let them know that I was listening and that I can go off the cuff and give them something else. You're gonna get curveballs when we talk about um, a mentor meeting. They're gonna ask questions that maybe you didn't prepare for. So be able to improvise with that. Now that being said, I don't want you to obviously lie, cheat and steal and take away information or not give information, but I want you to be able to go off of what's coming at you and have some sort of improvision to be able to work with. So a lot of this does come from how we deliver and then those inputs we get from our audience. There's a couple of great presenters that do this. If you don't know this, this is Gary V, Gary Verdichek. Gary V comes to us from a stage, from a, a cup of coffee, from uh, walking down a, a conference, he's in the hallway and somebody grabs him. Gary V knows what he wants to say, but he really feeds off the crowd around him. So he is prepared, but at the same time, he's ready to be imp improvise and actually give something else than what he was prepared to talk about. And then another one here, uh, if you don't know, this is Kate Bradley Chertis. So Kate Lee from Lately. Kate is a uh, AI generator for social media. Um, she comes through us from, um, uh, uh, well, what's the, hang on a sec. XM Radio and Sirius Radio. She was a DJ on a rock station there. And so she's got quite a background in preparing for something such as the structure. But when those calls came in or when people wanted to do something, she's off the cuff. And if you get a chance to see her speak now, when they put her on camera, she knows what she's talking about when we talk about structure. But at the same time, she comes back and she is off the cuff, ready to give you all sorts of information based on what you ask or where you want to go. So she's also another very impressive one we talk about owning a room so all of this being said we look at these five different things confidence we want you to have confidence when you go in a room but these other areas might help you build that it's your delivery storytelling structure and of course how we improvise with what's involved in that moment so i got a good story for you i was in korea my supervisor in nebraska and i we both went from nebraska and we went to korea together he went to one place and i went to another one of the days I went down and I walked down with them from his base and we drove out to uh, Ammo. It was myself in the truck, my boss and his boss, and we were packed into a truck. We drove out to a place called Ammo. As anybody knows, in the military, we have to keep our weapons safe. We have to keep our missiles and bombs and bullets and everything safe. And out in Ammo, it's a huge compound with fences and security guards and checkpoints and everything. And then we have earthen hardened structures that inside is where those, those weapons go. We're not supposed to be there. We pull up. I'm a telephone guy. We're all three telephone guys. I have no idea what we're doing. But we show up to this gate. We walk in. And as we go up to the gate, they start untwisting the zip ties and the ties. And they're taking this big sign off the gate. Big, huge sign. And it says, uh, warning, you know, no entry, authorization to shoot on, on site. And it basically don't come in here. And the security guard came out of the checkpoint with his weapon and says, can I help you guys? And my boss says, nope, we're good. We're just switching out this sign. And off he went and back into his, his shack. This is where your tax dollars go, you guys. So what happened was we, we took this sign and we went back. And in Korea, you could go off site and go off post and you could go wander around the country. But they prefer you stay on. It's safer to stay on country and stay on your post. Um, so on base, you had what was called a hooch. And everybody had their own drinking hooch place to be social come together and hang out while well, we pull up and we walk up and they literally slap this up on their door to their hooch and i thought what was i just part of so unfortunately when you go in all the signs from the base have been stolen and they've been put into this hooch it's decoration you know very classy we'll come to find out um it was the normal thing to do on base was to acquire these signs and put them into your hooch so i said what are we doing and my boss my boss and my boss's boss but he looked as long as you look like you know what you're doing, 
Nobody's going to question you, which was exactly what just happened. We went into that gate and took the sign. Nobody questioned, as long as you act like you know what you're doing, whatever. Now, I don't want you to lie, cheat, and steal. Please don't be go taking signs off of gates. Uh, but what I want to get at there is the same thing. Preparation. Go through it. Get your FST up. Make sure you're going through what you're going through and you have an idea of what it looks like. Be prepared for some curveballs. Either have an answer or get back to them with an answer. And all of those things will help you be confident in going in there and letting them know as you own that room that you really are there and you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, then that's okay too. But we want you to be prepared to not know what you're doing so that you can get them an answer and come back. We're wanting to leave all of our apprentices, managers, mentors, our clients, all of them. We want to leave them with a sense that we know what we're doing because we do and that two, we own that room. When you're coming on my time and we booked it, I'm not here to waste your time. Give them what they need, leave them that warm fuzzy and move on. That you all is how to own a room. Thank you.